Her Majesty Elizabeth II, Queen of United Kingdom and 15 other Commonwealth nations, will die some day. For some, it's the unthinkable question. What happens when the country's longest reigning monarch passes away? Well, for some civil servants, it's their job just to draw such plans. They are super secretive and have a special code name, Operation London Bridge. If you are fond of the Queen, it might seem like a huge deal. And if you are not, it might be easy to ignore what will happen. But it will have a big impact on all of our lives in lots of ways you might not have realized. But the eyes of the world will be upon London when the day does come. Operation London Bridge has been a code name that referred to the plan for what will happen in the days after the death of the Queen. The plan was originally devised in the 1960s and is updated several times each year. It involves planning from government departments, the Church of England, Metropolitan Police Service, the British Armed Forces, the media, the Royal Parks, the Greater London Authority and Transport for London. Some critical decisions relating to the plan were made by the Queen herself, although some can only be made by her successor. Her son, Prince Charles, is expected to be her successor to the British throne as Her Majesty's eldest son. As of early 2017, the phrase London Bridge is down was expected to be used to communicate the death of the Queen to the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and key personnel, setting the plan into motion. The code name Operation London Bridge primarily refers to events that would take place in the United Kingdom. In addition to the United Kingdom and other Commonwealth nations where Elizabeth II acts as monarch and head of state, have developed their own plans for what will happen in the days after her death. These corresponding plans would run concurrently with the Operation London Bridge. Predetermined phrases have typically been used as code names for plans relating to the death and funeral of a royal family member. Initially, code names were used by key officials in an effort to prevent public from learning of the death prior to an official announcement. When King George VI died in 1952, key government officials were informed with the phrase Hyde Park Corner. Several codenamed funeral plans for royal family members in the late 20th and 21st century have used the names of prominent bridges in the United Kingdom. The Queen's private secretary will be the first official to convey the news. Their first act will be to contact the Prime Minister, where their staffs will convey the code phrase London Bridge is down to the Prime Minister using secure telephone lines. The Foreign and Commonwealth Office's Global Response Centre based at a secret location in London, will communicate the news to the governments of the 15 other countries of which the Queen was the head of state and to the governments of the other countries of Commonwealth nations. With governments made aware, next will be the world's press. The media would be informed via an announcement to the Press Association. BBC would announce its staff through the radio alert transmission system which will alert them to play inoffensive music and prepare for news flash. While BBC 2 and 4 would suspend scheduled programming and merge with BBC 1's broadcast of the announcement. BBC News will air pre-recorded sequence of portraits during which the presenters on duty at the time will prepare for the formal announcement by putting on dark clothing prepared for this purpose. It has been reported that few medias has 11 days of prepared coverage ready and even some of them have long rehearsed her death but substituting the name as Mrs. Robinson. It is reported that huge deals have already been signed by broadcasters, apparently securing royal experts on an exclusive basis for the days leading up to the funeral. A footman would pin a dark edged notice to the gates of Buckingham Palace. At the same time, the palace website would display the same notice. The Parliament of United Kingdom would be recalled. If possible, it would meet within hours and the Prime Minister would address the House of Commons. The day after the Queen's death, the Council would meet at St. James Palace to proclaim the new monarch. Parliament would meet that evening when MPs would swear allegiance to the new monarch. At some point, top secret plans unfolding around him, Prince Charles will become aware that he is the King. Charles will have a great say over some aspects of the days following his mother's death. 
Other parts of the procedures will be set in stone after years of planning. The day after the death, Prince Charles will be officially proclaimed the King of the United Kingdom. This one will be popular with many of you. Even if the news will be grim, the Queen's death is likely to mean many people will go home from work early. It's going to depend on when in the day the news is announced. And of course, what you do for a living. But a mood of national mourning will demand that many business and workplaces shut down. A day off will be in store for most on the day of Her Majesty's funeral. Shops will close or open for reduced hours. If you are on a flight, the news may well be broken to you by the pilot of your aircraft. On the day of the announcement, there will be a sense of urgency. Different arrangements for moving the Queen's coffin are planned depending on where she dies. If the Queen dies at Windsor Castle or Sandringham House, it would be moved by car to Buckingham Palace within a couple of days. If the Queen dies overseas, a coffin will be flown out to her. A BAE-146 jet from the REVS No. 32 Squadron, known as the Royal Flight, will take off from North Holt at the western edge of London with a coffin on board. No matter when or where the Queen's death takes place, her body will be taken back to the throne room at Buckingham Palace. A 41-gun salute. Almost seven minutes of artillery will be fired from Hyde Park. The fourth day after the Queen's passing, We'll see her coffin move to Westminster's Hall to lie in state for four days. Of course, it won't be quietly taken into position. A grand military parade will see the coffin transported down the mall through horse guards. One of the most memorable moments of the Operation London Bridge will probably be when Big Ben strikes at 9 a.m. on the day of the funeral. Its hammers will be covered with a leather pad 7 sixteenths of an inch thick and it will ring out in muffled tones. At 11 a.m., the coffin will arrive at the doors of Westminster's Abbey and the nation will fall silent. Her Majesty's funeral is expected to cost nearly $8 billion, which is a hefty bill. But don't worry, unless the words London Bridge is down is uttered or BBC stops broadcasting your favorite program, you will know that Her Majesty is still alive and well. If you like this video, press the like button and share it. Also, do not forget to subscribe to this channel for more interesting videos. And hit the bell icon for notifications on future videos. See you till next time.